Welcome to the hidden ingredients of success. The first interactive podcast of its kind. And the only podcast that gives away cash on every episode. Find the hashtag Get Synchronized. And tune in to find out more details on how to win. Get Synchronized. Head on over to GetSynchronized.com where you can find the winning answer to the cash giveaway on this episode. That's G-E-T-S-Y-N-C-R-O-N-Y-Z-E-D on the content page where it says page 5 for my upcoming book, This. Today on the Hidden Ingredients of Success, we have a very special guest. Although I'm wearing this mask, this is a very serious episode as the topic is about mental health. And in order to reach success, your health has to come first. This is the very first interview, the very first show of the Hidden Ingredients of Success Interactive Podcast. And today we have our first guest, Mr. Khalid Moore, someone who I personally viewed his journey and watched him overcome some struggles that a lot of people in the world face. And unfortunately, a lot of people in the world that face these struggles don't even know it. And not only did Mr. Moore overcome these struggles, but he also wrote a book about it in order to contribute to society and help others get through those same struggles. If you find any of this content valuable, I'd like for you to please like this video and subscribe to the YouTube channel so we can help raise awareness. So this is a personal friend of mine. I'm very proud of him. His book is entitled A Journey to Peace. You'll find it on Amazon. So let's give a warm welcome to Mr. Khalid Moore. What's up, hey, good brother? Hey, how you doing? Good to see you again. Hey man, listen. I know this is a little awkward that I have this mask on. Uh, I'm about well, to take brother, it off. Well, brother, I know you have a personality, and I, I know that that's what you do. Well, no, I just figured that uh, being as though this episode is about mental health issues, I would leave it up to my audience to assume that my own mental health might be slightly compromised. <laughs> now let me stop. Um, so let me take this off. Are you ready to be a <laughs> And here we are. So let's do this the right way. Good brothers. Good to see good you, man. Good to see you, Steve. It's been a while. You mind me calling you by your government, do you? Oh, man, listen. For those who don't know me, my name is Steven. That is my first name. Most of you know me by sync. But my good brother over here met me in a place where no one knew me as sync. I guess we could share a little bit about that uh, with the viewers today. But uh, I'm going to start it off with the question about your book. Why did you decide to write okay. Journey to Peace? Well, how I decided to write it, I'm sitting in jail with you, as you know, and I'm going through it. I'm going through different emotions, anger, depression. All of my um, symptoms was flaring up. So I just started the uh, journey, uh, journal. Mm. Started writing as a journal. Okay. And then I remember you suggested, hey, you should turn that into a book. Well, well, so that's people that don't head. know, um, me and Mr. Moore, colleague, we met in jail. Unfortunately, I, I wish we could have met in a, a better place, but it was a blessing that we met because in us meeting, we'll be able to share uh, our experiences and your experiences with the world. And I really feel that it could benefit, especially the black community, because there's an under awareness of the mental health issues in the black community. I don't believe that there are enough resources to help deal with it. And I believe that there are so many factors that play a part outside factors, but that's another story. Um, so anyway, uh, we met in jail and, um, well, you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna tell them about, you know, your situation as far as being in PIC and how you ended up there and um, how we met, stuff like that. It was 2018. I was off of my medication. I had to stay on medication for my mental illness. And I was off my medication and I committed a crime, which uh, was aggravated assault. And it and it landed me at pick one of the worst jails, in my opinion, on State Road. I just want to get, tell a little story about how we really met, is I was having a um, kind of a moment then I was acting like I had a gun on the cell block and I was shooting bang, 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 bang. Just going around there and everybody thought it was funny. Some people thought it was, you know, what's wrong with this guy? And it was different emotions. 
but you reached out to me and you said, uh, because at the same time I was, uh, you could say, uh, expressing myself on how I was feeling and, and somehow you connected with that. And you wrote me a letter and you said, you know, I feel you and I understand where you coming from. I don't think you crazy. It, you know, it it's was crazy because to that. you literally just brought that to my memory because I totally forgot that I wrote you that letter. What it was yes. is when you came to the block, you were considered coming from A block and that was what we called the crazy block. So everybody on A block was people who suffered from mental illnesses or physical handicaps and they all had to take special medication. So when you came to the block, everybody in the block automatically knew from seeing you in the hallways that you came from quote unquote the crazy block. So when you were cutting up and acting up, everybody just automatically assumed that, oh, that's just you being crazy. That's who you are. And they were teasing you, making fun of you. And it's crazy because, you know, I just, I'm the type of person I don't like to judge people. Like, I just, I've come from a place inside where I just don't judge people. And being as though we met that one time where I think it was we met before prior to that on the uh, going to court. And I spoke to you. Yes. And we, we talked about numerology and life path numbers. And when you spoke to me on that t- on that on that time, I was like, okay, brother, maybe from A block, but he woke though. Like he knows something. You're not all the way crazy. So that intrigued me, and that made me, you know, just want to learn more and, and figure out who you were. And so when you came to the block that time, and I saw you, and everybody's teasing you, and just. I'm like, yo, they don't know what I know. Let me let me reach out to brother because I'm glad he's here and there's a reason he's here. And you were kind of amusing. I mean, some people found it annoying, but to me, I found it amusing. And in jail, you know, it's, it's such a depressing environment that anything amusing or anything that, you know, you can find amusing is, is just a, a breath of fresh air because there's not much fresh air circulating in jail. So, you know, it's just all these factors keep you up. Is that, and just being you connected in that way, it relieved a lot of my um, anxiety because I felt as though it, what a lot of people don't know, it's a stigma, st- stigma with us having mental illness. But if you give us some type of little attention or you give us some type of um, calm approach towards us, we will invite that. And that will calm us down. Because right. you didn't calm me down because the way you approached me. Okay. you know, And a lot of people don't know about that. I think it's a training that they do, in fact, on how to deal with someone that's going on. And um, I well, appreciate, I, I appreciate that. I, I, well, you know what? I appreciate you for mentioning that because, like I said, that literally slipped my memory. And the reason because is that's just the type of person I am. My younger sister, I'm not going to call her little because she's 27 now. But she, uh, she suffers from MS, uh, cerebral palsy, uh, epilepsy, you know, so she's mentally on a lower level she's not you know um functioning as someone her age would so you know i kind of took care of her you know coming up we're 10 years apart so seeing her battle what she was battling through i've always had a soft spot for anyone dealing with handicaps you know and um you're not not saying that that's what you know calling you handicapped or anything but you know, from everyone's perspective and from their perception of how you were, you know, you were being teased. And, and it's funny because the same people that were teasing you, one of them was teasing you. And one of those same dudes that was teasing you, when he saw you got a fresh pair of sneakers, he wanted to buy them off you and wanted to be your best friend all of a sudden. And it's crazy because I watched I, I watched him screaming out the cell, calling you all types of names, saying all types of foul stuff about you. And you probably didn't see it because you know how the cells are. You was down on the floor by yourself and you can see just a bunch of cells you don't know who was doing what but he was yelling right. all types of stuff out to you and then as soon as you came in there and had them new sneakers and you said you were selling them he was your best friend man jail is just boy yes this is crazy in jail i mean it's uh people will take advantage of you you know i'm not talking about physically i mean they will physically emotionally sexually or whatever but they'll manipulate and take advantage of any weakness you show Right. And that's the God's honest truth. I've seen it and I have had it happen to me. I knew, sometimes I knew what I was doing, but I was just letting that person take advantage of me anyway. 
right right i know right. it sounds crazy no but... it's, it's not it's not crazy at all because from a psychological standpoint when we feel alone or not even yeah. when we feel alone it's just human nature to want connection and sometimes that yes. connection isn't necessarily a healthy connection sometimes it's an abusive connection but just the feeling yes. of of having that connection as a humans we yearn for that and sometimes you know we take a couple of punches and, and trying to find that and, and so we actually learn we have to first have that fulfillment and wholeness within ourselves first before we subject ourselves to others because then we'll be willing to subject ourselves to unhealthy situations but let me uh get back to the questions for you um so what type of mental illnesses do you know of and which did you suffer from i personally suffer from bipolar disorder okay but i also have been diagnosed with major depression disorder and schizoaffective disorder okay you have then you have uh schizophrenia you have uh they the more serious ones but i'm not saying that they all not they all serious but schizoaffective is almost as having schizophrenia it's when you uh hear and see things and have beliefs that are not realistic a silly it's crazy because before they let him into my room a ceo who was uh you know she took to me in there as far as my personality and my demeanor so she pulled me to the side and said hey you got a new celly i really don't want to put him in there with you but i kind of do want to put him in there with you because i feel like if i put him in there with someone else it might be a big problem and i know how you are so i'm going to put him in there with you so um he is off she said she said i would show you you know all his his cases but he's off so you know just be careful and if you need anything let me know so she put him in there and um i found out that he suffered from schizophrenia and one of the things he told before he came to jail he had an incident where he was literally having a conversation with uh, an outlet on the wall you know like you know how the outlet you know has the prongs the two prongs and the, the middle looks like eyes and mouth if you look at it in a certain way he said he was having yeah. a full-fledged conversation with the outlet on the wall and um that was one of the things that you know i guess he was discovered and and they found out he was a little off so let me ask you how did you feel when you first discovered that you suffered from mental illness and you know what was that experience like like how was it explained to you how did you receive it did you believe it were you willing to accept it like what was that process like i didn't understand it i didn't believe it i didn't want to believe it i thought maybe it was just some drugs i took and they had me tripping but for years i did not accept the fact that i had a mental illness because mm -hmm. i didn't want to be labeled that you yeah. know and i just didn't want I felt embarrassed about it. I was very embarrassed about it. Yeah, I mean, I want to let you talk about that more, but I kind of feel you on that because, you know, us in the community as a minority, we already suffer from so many other, you know, statistics and stigmas and stereotypes that just owning something like having a mental illness and owning that is just something that it's very rare that someone from our culture will own up to because of we already facing a lot of adversity and that's just another you know another um what's the word i'm looking for disadvantage i guess to some people would say right and if i could just say when i'm growing up i'm 50 now but when i was growing up eight nine years old and we seen some person with some mental illness it wasn't it was just like we said they crazy they right. crazy you never really heard mental illness at that time back in the 70s 80s but Mental illness is not shameful now because they're scrutinized for it. Right. And um, I just want to advocate for that because there's so many of us that don't want to accept the fact that we need medicine and help. And we need therapy. Right. That was one big thing too about it. I didn't want to be on medicine. Right. Right. That right. medicine saved my life. Has there been any situations in your life? where your mental illness has affected someone that you personally have a relationship with or that you love? I would say with my father, my parents, mm -hmm. because they, I didn't understand that they were, they were trying to help me. They was uh, getting me 302, which is involuntary, um, uh, involuntary commitment to a mental health hospital. And I would outlay, I would lash at them, call them names, it's my own parents. Right. They raised me, call them names, act violent towards them. 
I, I let stole their money. I mean, I, I really guess at that to... time you didn't understand what they were doing, and, and all you all you just looked at it as they were betraying you, and you just felt rage, and you didn't care at that point. You just whatever, whatever. Exactly. Um, That's exactly what it was. I mean, I he was it. actually physically chasing me down to get me to calm down and take me to the hospital when mm -hmm. I'm thinking he's trying to kill me. Right, right, right. I'm, I mean, I don't want to get... <laughs> I so what was your relationship like with your parents before all of this? Listen, I, I'm, I come from a two-parent home mm -hmm. and very loving family and very close. And it's just that, um, hey man, a, a dog bit me and that dog was a mental illness, you know, and um, you know I can't justify it. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to justify it. I don't know how to well, explain. You know. I, I stopped a long time ago saying, "Why me? Why me, God? Why did I have to, you know, get it?" But it's a reality. Well, see, what a lot of people don't know is there could be two factors that play a part. You can have genetic or physical factors that play a part in mental illnesses. And then you can have just developmental, which are more so emotional and behavioral uh, mental illnesses that have been put on you by, you know, external factors like the parents or, you know, uh, suffering from traumas or, or, you know, things like that, experiences that you may have had that have been traumatic to you that could have set off, you know, a, a, a behavioral disorder, a, you know, anxiety, depression, you know, things like that. And then the genetics that where this, you know, the schizophrenia and the bipolar and stuff like that, usually that's chemical imbalance related and, you know, maybe things going on with your brain, you know, malfunctioning and stuff like that. That's absolutely right. When you were in jail, what inspired you to write this book in jail? I know I told you know you said that you mentioned that I, I told you that you should turn your, your journal into the book because I actually myself was in the process of writing this the hidden exactly. ingredients of success in jail so you know we met well we didn't meet there but we came to the law library where I was working at and I was typing up my book and then you would you know tell me about you know what you were writing and, and you was like oh that's cool you you writing a book and I'm like I remember you said that and I said yeah I am and, and I passed it off to y'all y'all were reading it. And he was like, oh, that's interesting. And then you was talking about, you know, how you were writing. And I was like, well, you should turn that into a book. You know, you should do this. And then we started working together when you would come to the law library. We would type up together and stuff like that. And, um, you know, develop the book. But what was it like for you in jail, like dealing with your mental illness? Were you able to find a way to deal with it in jail? Is, is that where you learned how to, how to actually combat your mental illness? Like what actually pushed you to the point where you said this is what i have enough is enough let me figure out a way to to now deal with this and move forward so that i can have a better life basically i i, I have learned some skill coping skills with mental illness it's um uh, you know from my years of dealing with it so those skills started coming back to me once i started interacting with you and you was doing something positive and I said, you know what? I can do something positive. And I said, let me start. I started, my behavior started to And my most important thing was, is I wanted to write the book and get the message out to others that's going through it. And just interacting with you and getting that motivation to do the book changed me. And it changed that. me for the better. And see, you writing this book is going to motivate and inspire others. It's going to change others. And it, it's just like a domino effect, you know, one person literally can change the world by inspiring just one other person. And I, I'm very proud of you. How's your book doing on Amazon? I see, I've been seeing comments on your page. I see hey, listen, a lot of people every, just been... Everybody's been really receptive to it. And I had five stars. Um, I had great reviews. Mm -hmm. And people are just blown away by the genuinely openness that I give people with the book and the things that I have been through. That's what's really getting the people to connect with it because they have family members where they also dealt with some issues. They have sons, daughters, cousins that have been through the same thing and they can relate. So how can people connect with you um, outside of the book? Um, once again, your book is called A Journey to Peace. Uh, they can find it on Amazon.com. Journey to Peace. That's the cover. So when y'all see that cover on Amazon, 
You know, that's the book written by Khalid Moore. Right. The easiest way is to type in my name, Khalid Moore, and it'll bring you to my book, Journey to Peace. Okay, I heard that. Thank you, good brother, man. Um, anything else you want to say for the viewers before we sign out? Yes, I just want to say one thing is thank you for your time. Share this podcast if you can. And I want to thank you for having me on. And I'm looking forward to a lot of things coming from you. I, heard, I appreciate that. Especially good, the book. I, I appreciate you for taking the time to be on this podcast, man. I really feel like it's very important. And a lot of people need to be aware of this. And hopefully, man, we can start something, you know, bringing some awareness to the people who are not aware and, and, and yes, help open that's... people up who are dealing with these issues, who are afraid to open up about them and who don't understand that people who can see it, that love them are genuinely trying to help them instead of them fighting these people, but accepting this help and, you know, taking accountability and understanding the problem is the first step to being able to solve it and getting the proper support you need in order to uh, move yes. forward in life. One more thing before we go. Uh -huh. I just want to give people my Facebook. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, Khalid sure. Moore. Um, that's my Facebook. I, I just showing you, I, I, I don't really have nothing on it, but just showing you how I'm living. Um, okay. I'm living a normal, regular life now. And so my I'm Instagram. I'm gonna put up your Facebook and your Instagram on the, on the screen, so everything in the description. So everybody watching, you can find his Facebook and his Instagram in the description. So you can follow him along with uh, a link to his, a direct link to his book on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you, good brother. It's All right, thanks you, man. for having me. Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm reach out to you soon, man. We're gonna be talking. Okay. All right, peace and love. All right, God bless. It hurt me to wake up and see my beautiful black people suffer victimized by the oppressive harsh realities of the hood. I guess even though we were free, we were still slaves in the mind. Nothing.
morning, Pizza Steve. Good morning, Mr. Gus. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, Snapchat. How are you today? I'm doing brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs>
Anybody that's listening that had anything to do with Empire, you can get the song for $15 million only, cash, and endorsement with vitamin water, because the brother like vitamin water. Don't so be realistically. Y'all not fucking with it. They said it in a nice way. I'm saying it my way. Y'all not fucking with it. Y'all not fucking with it. And you won't get rich when y'all bitches.